Hello, and welcome to the Knitting with Cat Hair podcast. My name is Nikki, also known as Knitting with Cat Hair on Instagram and Cat Hair Knitting on Ravelry. I'm coming to you from Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, where I live with my partner, our two daughters, and our five cats. So, welcome back to all returning viewers, and a big welcome to all my new viewers. Um, This is primarily a knitting podcast, although I do talk about other uh, crafts that I'm delving into at the time, such as cross stitch and crochet. So I hope everyone's doing well. Um, Yeah, we're we're getting used to a new routine here. Um, Schools have reopened this past week and um, yeah, that's taking a bit of adjustment, uh, getting used to it. Um, yeah, my daughter's returned to school full time. She's in grade five this year. And uh, my stepdaughter is also returned. She's in starting high school. Um, so there's been a little bit of anxiety on both of our kids' parts and, and on the parts of, of us as well. Um, but I think, I think we're, getting, we're getting through it. Things are getting better. Um, yeah, so I, I really hope everyone else is doing well. Um, it's crazy. Who thought, who would have thought that this COVID business would be still going on um, this late in the game and it doesn't look like it's gonna be going away anytime soon. So anyways, I don't wanna get into the COVID talk. We've all heard enough about it. So let's jump right into the knitting. Um, Yeah, so I'll start with what I'm wearing. For those of you who are new to my podcast, um, this is a wool and honey sweater by a uh, pattern by Andrea Mowry, and I did finish it um, earlier in the year. Can't remember when now. It was before summer, anyways. Um, so yeah, I'm finally getting to wear it, and I really love it. Um, I knit it up out of Tennis Fiber Arts Pure Wash fingering, so it's like a super wash. Um, I did the extra large size. Oh, and the colorway is called caramel. And um, I just recently got around to washing and blocking it. So here's a, um, I guess a a word of warning to those of you using Superwash who aren't familiar with um, this fact. Um, It it stretches. It really stretches when you wash it. Um, I think I gained like four inches, so I was, worried that my sweater was going to be too short um yeah not too short so after i washed and blocked it um and by the way trampoline trampolines do wonders for um blocking (laughs) outside i was able to lay out all my knits um and block them all outside and because the the trampoline has like holes in it right like it's kind of breathable it dries so much faster anyways for those of you who have a trampoline at home and kids aren't using it it's another use for it Um, So yeah, I'll stand up so you can see, but basically (laughs) it's quite long now. I think it was up to about here when I first finished knitting it. And so you can see it's definitely stretched and it's gotten wider. It's quite wide. It's, It's boxy, but you know what? It's still, I still love it. I'm still gonna rock it. And this beautiful honeycomb pattern, so pretty and very simple. It's, it's a great pattern. Anyways, so that's what I'm wearing. So let's move into finished objects. I only have one and it's a bit of a cheater object because I did finish it a little while ago and just forgot to show it on my last podcast. So I had purchased some cottons a while ago and I was knitting up a dish towel. Nothing super exciting, but I think it turned out pretty cute. So I haven't woven in the ends yet. I hate weaving in ends. <laughs> I'm so lazy about it until I actually have to do it. Um, so yeah, this is the dish towel. It turned out a lot larger than I expected. I think because the cotton I used is a little bit thicker. Um, yeah, so that's my one and only finished object. And it is a pattern called, I think it's called the Bistro and Kachina dish towels or something like that. I'll put links to everything I talk about will be um, found down in the down bar below. So it was a pay for pattern, although it's, it's, to be honest, it's a pretty simple pattern. You can probably make it up on your own. So to accompany that, moving into my works in progress, 
I was on a, um, a morning long series of conference calls the other day for work. So I needed something simple to work on. And it seems like all the projects I'm working on right now seem a little, you have to pay attention to them. So I just started a, a dishcloth to match the dish towels. And this is just, um, it's actually a pattern called Grandma's Favorite Dishcloth. Um, super simple, I'm just using two colors. Um, yeah, I did that in a few hours. Probably could have been faster if I wasn't actually paying attention to what was happening at work. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's my first work in progress. And that is housed in a bag that I don't think I've ever shown. It is a Pac-Man bag <laughs> by Longview Creations, I think. Yeah, um, excuse all the cat hair. Uh, yeah, so that's a, I think she's on Etsy. She's a Canadian hand maker, bag maker. All right, moving on. Um, let's save those two for last and we'll move into, okay, we'll talk about my Svelga sweater. So this is a pattern, I cannot remember the name of the designer. I'm knitting it up out of the pattern I got out of one of my Lane magazines. I can't remember which issue now. Again, all the information will be found down below. <laughs> oh, so prepared. Okay, so I've put this one on, on hold. Uh, so maybe I can, this is what it looks like so far. It's a boxy sweater, fingering weight. I'm knitting it up out of lichen and lace, um, sock yarn. And the colorway is beach glass. And I am alternating skeins. The skeins are very different. I think I talked about this on the last podcast episode. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a lot of stockinette, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, those are good for conference calls and things, TV knitting and stuff like that. Um, but after my experience with washing and blocking my wool and honey and how much it stretched, I'm kind of concerned. I'm very concerned, in fact. So I think what I'm going to do, because I'm a bad knitter and I didn't, did I do a gauge swatch? Okay, if I did a gauge swatch, and I may have, I think I did to choose my needle size. But by gauge swatch, I didn't wash and block. And I know you're supposed to, I know, I'm terrible knitter. I don't do that. I very rarely do that. In fact, I think I've only done that once and that was for my partner's sweater that I was knitting him. That, that's a whole nother story, but I will, I will dig that out to show it to you one day on my podcast. But yeah, I actually did wash and block that gauge swatch. So I knew it was gonna stretch. But anyways, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna knit a gauge swatch. I'm gonna wash and block it and see how much it stretches and then work from there because Right now, as it stands, I was already doing a larger size. I'm pretty sure, I can't even remember what size, but I know it was larger. I, I tend to go larger just because I can always work with a little bit extra, but when it's too small, too tight, I won't wear it. So I'm gonna take it out and redo it at a better size. So that's my Svelga sweater. And that's housed in my Jessabelle B bag, which I show all the time. I love it, Canadian. Hand, bag maker. Why do I keep saying hand? Bag maker. She's on Etsy as well. Okay. Next are my two time socks. They're just vanilla socks. Showed them last time. Not a huge amount of progress. Um, I did knit on them a little bit, so and see where we're at. And this yarn is Polka Dot Creek Yarns, Canadian hand dyer. Can't remember the colorways. <laughs> um, don't have the tag? Really? Well, that's helpful. Okay, pretty sure, okay, I do have them, haha. <laughs> So, okay, so the main sock color is called Spring Showers. 
And it comes with two little minis, coordinated minis. I'm only using the one. And the one I'm using is called Pool. And that's kind of like this darker turquoisey color, the top here. So my pattern for this one is my standard vanilla sock pattern, which is 64 stitches on US ones. Obviously I'm doing magic loop. This time I'm trying two at a time. This is my first time doing this. I don't, okay, I'll get into that, but I'm now my new pattern is twisted rib for the cuff. I don't remember how many rounds I did. Maybe eight for this, just because it's a mini and I don't have a ton of it. And I wanna do the, the heels and the toes in the same color. So I didn't do a huge, um, a huge cuff. I think it was only seven or eight rounds. And okay, so I'm gonna be honest, I'm not loving this. And I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the two at a time thing. I don't think it is. I think it's the vanilla sock part. The fact that it's just, I don't know. It's just not holding my interest at all right now. And I was on a sock kick for a while. But I was doing a lot of pattern socks. I don't know. Anyways, I'm sure they'll get done eventually. So that's my two at a time vanilla socks. And that is housed in this handy dandy two at a time sock knitting bag. It's actually made for two at a time socks. It's got bees on it and it's by My Needle, My Needle Crafts. Oh good gosh, it's been a while since I've said this. <laughs> Where's the tag? I'm pretty sure it's called My Needle Crafts and if it's not, I will rectify that down below in the down bar. All right, so that's another work in progress. So now we'll move on to the new cast-ons. <clears throat> um, I'll end with this one, I think. So on my last podcast, if you watched it, you'll know that my mom, who made a special guest appearance, and I went to Georgian Bay Fiber Co., which is a local hand dyer here in Sudbury, and purchased some yarn and my yarn was dyed up in like lightning speed time and i cast on for the swallowtail sweater this is by a pattern by natosophy um i'll pop a picture in so you can see what the finished product project looks like um yeah it's got this beautiful Okay, can anyone find it now? Oh, I'm right on the butterfly part, that's why. It's got a beautiful butterfly right at the, right in the middle. Let's see if you can see this, this is one wing. Uh, so these are the tips of the two wings here where my fingers are. So there's a butterfly right in the middle there. Um, yeah, I developed a bit of a butterfly obsession this past summer, I think, with all the monarchs and I don't know. Anyways, yeah, I saw, I did see um, Chevy Rail's podcast and she was knitting up the same sweater and it looked really um, pretty. Her, her color choices are really lovely too. She's doing kind of like this color, but maybe more mustard yellow and um, a teal or turquoise. Looks really pretty. So mine, uh, my colors are, I should say, as I mentioned, this is yarn by Georgian Bay Fiber Co. It is on her BFL base. It's non-superwash. Um, fingering weight. So it is called Franklin Lichen. Here's a picture of the little tag, so it shows the lichen. It's got a little blurp on the back about it. And this is the color. Pretty true. So that's Franklin Lichen. Then we have McInnes Lace. And McEwen Wrought Iron. And finally, last color is called Noble Rust. 
so pretty. So yeah, the four colors, let's see if I can hold them all up. My sweater. I'm really, really enjoying this knit. Um, it's not my first color work, but I would say it's my first color work where I'm actually feel like I know what I'm doing. So I didn't at first. <laughs> So I've been watching a couple videos. I watch um, Fleece and Harmony podcast, and Kim is making the Paisley by Sitzel Hoivik. I think that's her name. It's a all over color work cardigan, steaked cardigan, I believe. Anyway, she has been really looking into um, different techniques for knitting color work, and um, I tried a bunch. I can't do it. I just. I don't know, like the whole using two fingers, using these two fingers. I, I am a thrower, an English thrower. That's how I learned. That's how I knit. I just cannot seem to do anything else. I practiced and practiced and practiced and my, my stitches were so loose. I just, they looked terrible. So being the impatient person that I am, I'm just throwing my yarn, dropping, Picking up the next one, throwing, dropping. It's slower, I'm sure, but faster than me struggling and having to rip out because it was too loose. So that's the way I knit. Um, and at first I consciously chose to do the background color as the more dominant color. And then when it got time to, like I actually had more, way more than this, I've ripped back all of the color work and started over. So I had gotten down to probably about halfway through the butterfly when I started to realize that because I was using the background color as my dominant color, the um, outline of the butterfly was not joining up and there were kind of like spaces in between the stitches of the darks, like the outlines. So it just doesn't look good. So yeah, ripped back all the color work and started over and now I'm very happy with how it's turning out although I don't know maybe tensions probably off I don't know if you can see this but I get these bubbles and I don't know if that's gonna come out with blocking I've never finished an all like a color work sweater before I did knit a color work hat for my mom and some mitts those are a little more forgiving I find but yeah I guess we'll see if you guys knit color work do you know is this just, is this a gauge issue or when I wash and block it, will those kind of inconsistencies in the texture flatten out? I hope so. <laughs> Regardless, I will be wearing the crap out of this sweater. Um, I think I mentioned it's non super wash, so yay. Don't have to start over and resize it. Happy about that. Um, what else can I say about this? I'm knitting the... 50 finished, I think is it the finished? Oh my goodness, I can't even remember. 51 inch. So I wanted some positive ease. The original original pattern, I think you'll see from the picture I had put in, that it's quite fitted. I don't, I don't want that, that's just not my style. So I'm going a little bit bigger and I want it to be comfy and cozy and be able to throw it on over top of a t-shirt or whatever if I need to. And a uh, pair of jeans and away we go. So yeah, really enjoying it. Um, and I'll be working on it some more this weekend. So that is the swallowtail. Okay, I'm just gonna pack this stuff up and then I will get on to my last work in progress. Which is housed in a bag I bought at Michael's. It was really affordable. I think it's meant for color work knitting. I think I mentioned this when I first bought the bag. You'll see there's these two holes, maybe two at a time socks, I don't know. Theoretically, you could put, if you're starting a project, you could put your yarn through these holes and knit that way. That is not a good idea in my home. As I mentioned, I have five cats. Anything that would be hanging outside of the bag would be fair game and they would be destroying it. So housed in here is another color work project that I'm working on. Just get it organized here. 
And this is the um, Woodlark Shawl by Larka um, Fiber Tales podcast. Yeah, so it's kind of hard to show because it's, so it's a shawl, as I mentioned, but it's steaked. So this will be my first steaking. And I'm actually knitting this up as part of a knit along um, that the uh, yarn curator and Felicity Yarn Studio ladies, um, Naomi and Zoe, are, are holding um, a steak along 2020. So yeah, this will be my first steak. Um, pretty excited. It was, not gonna lie, pretty tedious. Um, I think I restarted this thing, it, it took me seven tries seven tries to get from to get that middle part done basically <laughs> it looks simple <laughs> i don't know what was wrong with me i can't even remember what i was doing wrong but it was just very tedious um and i, I was doing it in the round on magic loop with needles that were way too long first of all should have started with smaller smaller um length cord um yeah, but I finally got it. And then I had a bit of trouble with this most recent part of the color work. I don't know. I just, I find the pattern. I'm not trying to be disrespectful to Larka or anything like that, but I find it very, the instructions are not intuitive to me. And I don't know, I don't know. It just is not intuitive to me so I have a hard time understanding them um, but I did finally figure out what I was doing wrong rip back fixed it okay so enough about that um, now it's very enjoyable I have to say really really loving it I worked on it all last night um, I am knitting this up out of yarn by another Canadian yarn dyer called um, small bird workshop. Okay, I don't have the tags for them. That's strange. Okay, so the yarn is the main color. This beautiful undyed BFL Gotland mix. I think it's a 75-25. I can't remember. I think it's 75 BFL, 25 Gotland. It's very... Like, I want to say rustic, but it's not. Like, it's not one of those, like, rough rustic wools. It's so soft. Actually, I forgot to mention, the Georgian Bay Fiber Co. BFL is super soft, too. I'm loving it. Um, yeah, this one, beautiful. And it's got a bit of a sheen to it. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but I guess that's from the Gotland. So pretty. So that's the um, natural undyed color. And then my color work color is this one. It's like a dark very deep tealy tealy blue green and the colorway is called ink yeah i'm loving these um so small bird workshop she has a i think she has a website or is she on etsy she might be on etsy anyways links all down below <laughs> so yeah that's my uh woodlark shawl and I am really enjoying it. So like I have to have this done in terms of the steak along, I have to have this done by the end of the year. And I think I can totally do that. Although the rows are like the rounds are getting bigger. Um, yeah. So I don't know if I mentioned, but again, because I'm steaking, I had to um, consciously pick yarns that were um, non-superwash. And I really was trying to find some in Canada that I could um, that I could get colors that I liked for it. Um, but you know what? I'm finding there's not a whole lot of choice when it comes to non-superwash. Everything's superwash these days. So yeah, I had to look around for quite a while before I was able to find some. If you have any links to any great Canadian um, non-superwash yarns, I would love to hear about it. Um, yeah. Anyways, yeah, so that's my, that's my final work in progress. And
and that is it for knitting. Um, so in terms of life, uh, I was pretty busy the last, so was it last week? Yes. So not this past week, but the week before that, before school started, I, I took um, a week's vacation from work and um, my daughter, my 10 year old and I went and we did a bunch of things. So we got together with friends. We went out um, to one of our provincial parks called Killarney Provincial Park. We went canoeing and swimming. That was really nice with friends. And my uh, bestie and her husband and her son. And then we went out, uh, my daughter and I went out to Birch Lake where my mom lives. And we visited my mom and, and her husband. We spent a night there and that was nice catching up and then and then so my partner was working all week so that's why it was just kind of my daughter and I and then on the weekend um, my partner had booked us a three nights because it was a long weekend a three night stay at a lodge so FYI we usually go camping every every year we've been going camping since my daughter was two um, not even two yeah, she was like 18 months old. We started camping, tent camping. And we always did that every year. Um, and then I've noticed over the past couple of years, we've been doing it less and less. We still got out every year, but this was the first year we didn't do any tent camping. So um, my partner was like, okay, we have to do something. We have to get out and do a family trip um, and just kind of say goodbye to goodbye to summer so he did book us this three night stay at this local lodge it was local it's about an hour's drive um up north very secluded out in the wilderness um yeah it was lovely the weather was okay in terms of it didn't really rain much but it wasn't wasn't hot it was cool the wind was very chilly so i was wearing my wools <laughs> It was one of my woolens, um, but it was nice just to get out of the city. Because, I mean, it's Sudbury. It's not a huge city by any means, but it's still noisy. It still has city noises, and I miss, yeah. That's what I love about going out to Birch Lake, where my mom lives, too. It's so peaceful. So, yeah, we spent uh, three nights at this, at this lodge, and we didn't do... All that much we just relaxed it was really nice not to have to do anything all the meals well all the meals breakfast and supper were included so we didn't have to cook we just kind of relaxed we went on some nature walks um, the kids went swimming we went paddle boating I went swimming once dove in almost died it was the water was so cold and I I pride myself on being kind of tough when it comes to swimming in lakes this was way too cold like I don't, I didn't even feel the water. I just dove in because my daughter was swimming. I figured, oh, it's safe. It's good. She wouldn't be in it if it was too cold. Oh, I was wrong. Dove in, literally lost my breath. Like came up gasping for air. It was that cold. It took my breath away. <laughs> and I was like, I'm out. <laughs> that was it. Why did it go in? And she stayed, she didn't stay in much longer after that either. Actually, she was starting shivering. <laughs> Lips were starting to turn purple. I'm like, okay, hypothermia is about to set in here. Yeah. But she loves to swim. So, and that was the, that was kind of our goodbye summer. And <laughs> that's about it. We're still waiting for my pergola to arrive. I don't know. I mentioned it way back when, when my partner first ordered me this beautiful pergola slash swing. And um, they kept delaying it and delaying it. And I understand, I mean, with COVID going on, it was being handmade in BC out of like this beautiful uh, redwood cedar. Um, I'm sure they had probably issues just with, you know, business, all businesses have had issues. So they kept delaying it. So um, the expected arrival date is now next week. We did get one piece to <laughs> yesterday. Just one piece. It looks like it's the bottom of the swing part. I don't know. <laughs> it's not even the whole swing. It's just one piece. So hopefully the rest is coming and will arrive 
next week and we can put that together and actually sit out and enjoy it before the snow comes. So I'm looking forward to that. And my tomatoes are still going strong. By going strong, I mean they're still there. They haven't died. <laughs> they're, you know what though, they're about this big. This big, they're not red yet. Um, I'm just letting them, until we start getting some frost, I'm just gonna let them do their thing. And then once I see that frost is coming or whatever, I'll just pick them and let them sit on the windowsill and hopefully they'll ripen. And if not, um, Alma from Gray Magnolia's podcast was telling me about fried green tomatoes, so I might try that. FYI, if you haven't checked out her podcast, I'll put a link down below. You should. It's really great. She is now doing, um, what does she call it? Knitwear Wednesdays, where she puts on um, one of her knitted garments and styles it um, different ways. So you can see how you can get ideas for how to style your knits, which I think is really great. So yeah, check that out, um, link down below. And with that, I shall say goodbye. I think that's it for me. So hopefully, I know I keep saying I'll see you in two weeks. I've been pretty bad at being on time with my two weeks. Um, so I will just say I will see you shortly. <laughs> Bye.